told me not to stare into the sun. So once when I was six, I did. The doctors didn't know if my eyes would ever heal. I was terrified. Alone in that darkness. Slowly, daylight crept in through the bandages. And I could see. But something else had changed inside me. I'm the fire bearer. Holder of the sun, the earth and the universe combined as one An everlasting energy taking all forms Blue skies on sunny days, terrible storms The one who tears down what you adorn And curses the material things that you mourn But look up in the sky cause I am the dawn And the light that empowers your flesh as you yawn Strong, undeniably so Lift better known as a society folk The deity glow Reach into my center I bet you feel pleasure and pain As you enter the tormentor Please her, embrace her, squeeze her As your skeleton crush Your physical turns into gelatin plus Due to overstimuli You liquefy I send you back to the earth soil To quench the turmoil Then the ground splits To smaller corporations and cops And give birth to rock So we can have solid ground on which to walk Stand strong and talk We write down theories and chalk on the sidewalk the devil learns hammer hawk, earth fall to hell Look into the eyes of what you do fell The devil learns hammer hawk, earth fall to hell my style orbits around nine planets of forces Ominous metaphorics and vision of devil corpses Lion order, mad scientist slash author Present the type of horror that boils the holy water Get warped with the knowledge that falls the holy father Hard boys become toys inside the real saga So why bother? My whole floor alliance is harder So bring the drama, we all know the science is smarter I set off crowds, style wild like a circus I seek new souls when I walk past churches A law of praise to stay true to a devout purpose Seeking out the wise wherever the God searches Close that I embark and leave his squadron shadow dodging Lyrics are softening like sucks to fill the hotness No option, narrow odds Fucking with guards and straight gambling with your tarot cards The devil learns hammer hawk, earth full of hell Look into the eyes of a true fell The devil learns hammer hawk, earth full of hell system patterns emerge therefore there are patterns everywhere in nature
Yo, what up YouTube? What up, what up, what up? Or right here, I'm going to talk about um, some more things. Uh, that it says in scripture that uh, I believe Satan fell due to the brightness of his reason or Lucifer. And Lucifer would be the original spirit of man because the brightness of Adam's reason was that he reasoned that one tree in the garden was different than any of the other trees in the garden. And the serpent catches him in this situation in which Adam goes down a trajectory. And the reason why I say this is because, you know, when we talk about the brightness of, 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 of reason is that Adam could have only assumed since he heard from a different voice and did not recognize it, that um, he could only assume why that tree was particularly different to him in the garden. It wasn't, it, it doesn't connotate an actual conversation between Adam and God, but rather his internal voice. And his internal voice, he had separated a particular tree in the garden according to uh, his conscience, okay? or his reasoning, I should say his reason, to make a particular tree different than all the other trees. You know, and when God creates something, he creates all things, or uh, all things as good, okay? This is what the serpent knew, okay? But the brightness, you know, all things that God creates are good. But the brightness of, of reason is, is the knowledge which separates us. And this could trickle down particularly into society also. Gems in the earth are considered to be rare. Or the earth's minerals or the earth's resources. As minorities in America, black men, allegedly, make up 13%. This includes the different demographics, individuals that's in the prison system, individuals that are children, individuals that are female. And such in, soci in, in society, according to knowledge, there is separation. And in this saturation, separation of crayons, you find a man's fear. A man's fear is correlated with his particular knowledge about the trees in the garden. And therefore in that knowledge, it separates him from God and in the brightness of his reason. We have individuals and races with supremacy over other ones. And if God is love, this is the separation. On a checkerboard, do you not need both black and white spaces? Then you consider the numbers, circumstances, opportunities, Planned Parenthood, certain energies, business and practices that happen in the earth and where it is centralized mostly. And we consider those spaces on the board. And of this fear, this fear that an individual will be particularly erased if they deal with a particular tree according to some type of supremacy, some type of knowledge, some type of vulture. You understand what I'm saying? And such is the same in this world is backwards and the fruit may look good to eat. But this is subjective of the knowledge 
that that flesh chooses to carry, whether it's conscious or lowly and sensual and superficial also. And Cupid strikes men down and they liver with a, with a heart. That's an arrow, the mighty archer, the spy and tradecraft that happens between beds and relationships also amidst social media. And if you have black spaces, do you not need the white ones also? Does God have a diverse hand? The situation is in the numbers. The intentions are shown in the earth. Abel's blood cries up from the ground. And should we be a little bit more conscious being God's country? That's something to think about. You see, if you have white spaces you also i also have to have black spaces considering things that are precious in the earth are most rare and that's black people knowing that we only make up 13 percent of america and this is god's country and i gotta claim two nationalities africa and america and my race is the color of a crayon, not an ethnicity. And this is the knowledge that separates individuals where they're seared in their conscience. And we got phrases like survival of the fittest. If we were to be Darwinistic with global warming and all sorts of other type of shit, think about it. Certain genetics haven't changed that much. God was heard in the cool of the day. If you catch my drift, it's mellow. Like a new port. I'm bringing back Wesley Snipes. Just so that you understand me. So therefore, things would have to rotate that individuals were more pro-life towards the inner city, meaning Planned Parenthood by Bill Gates' father gotta get out. That's King Herod. We don't find this shit in the suburbs, why not? The Holocaust of black men is not talked about. And what it is, it's talked about with a bunch of bywords. And this association of hate is what brings individuals together and it's more childish than what it imposes. It speaks of an ignorance, an ignorance that contains knowledge and man knows that by the brightness of his reason is an adversary of love and wars in the earth, isn't it? A war brings bad business and it needs grapes. And the whore keeps her legs open for everyone. That's business. And so we speak of this tree with mixture. You walk down the street, you ask anybody what they are and the black man knows not. The other individuals have different percentages of other shit. And yet they have some type of pure separation. Fear over 13% of America pertaining to this and having babies. Is this why there's not as many opportunities for jobs and shit? Think about it. And this is what I got to bring up, man. That we make up 13%, those 13% individuals should have jobs. They college and education should be free. It should be an odd thing that they don't go to Princeton. 
If this country wants to keep up with its blessings, but men gets greedy, that's a fruit of the flesh. And it's not Esau, my brother. Just the same. Unless he's not. And that's knowledge. An adversary. And that adversary has traditions. And those traditions are from ancient ages. In which the individuals have cheek teeth like knives. And they sell. Looking nice in suits. Nice shoes. Nice belt. We go to work triggered with the Bible. Speaking on the streets. Prescriptions and daily news. And is God's hand not diverse? For this cause of God's conscience, us being minority, the fruit of faith from Abraham is seed. And the minority is as the sons of God, would it not? Because rationally out of proportion, if Abraham was to be blessed as the stars in the sky with generations of children, then that would mean that could only be black men as the Jews, tribe of Shem. We have the tribe of Judah. We haven't been recognized. We are first fruits. We are despised and called by by words. And now you see why I, why I smile and raise it in the sun. And I love the oppression. And I listen to heavy metal. And I'm like, fuck, bring it on, nigga. I look at white people like my sons. Only if they act right. That's the gospel of Christ and what he brought for all nations. Just to get shit straight when you go into them churches and sing those Negro gospels while underpaying my wages. Just to put things in perspective in America while I lack dual citizenship. Whoa. But yet we are a melting pot. Or we are growing. And the fact of the matter is that the fear of the supremacy and that type of knowledge knows God's plan and it's exactly evil and wicked. If we are all to be as Christ and Christ's feet were as burnt bronze, then that would mean the blessing of God and the image of God would be the black man, the seed of Amor uh, Abraham, to have seed and generations as the stars of the sky in which two nations came out of one woman and two nations as the serpent of Moses staff devoured the two serpents of Egypt. We combine like Vision and Ultron and I'm sitting here ready to love my enemies and looking at these wildlings like, amen. Let's get it on. Maybe we should touch gloves. But I'm a lover, not a fighter. Understand? The providence, if not, is out of my en enemies to bring unity and harmony amongst all of us. The only God and only God alone can praise us, go to him. Because what man could speak in these type of words? These are not the words of flesh. This is wisdom that comes down. This is grace and mercy. This is faith. Things you haven't heard before. But we all have understanding and we all know that I'm telling the truth. And when I say I am, I speak from my core, even though it must pass through the density of this lampshade we call flesh that has its way sometimes. It's like I have a girlfriend all in one. She just nags with her impulses and I get tempted. 
I like to move quick and she just drags like the internet. And this is the splinter which creates the thorn in the mind of men. And his fears and insecurities and guilty consciousness has trains of thoughts and these trains of thoughts are different types of knowledges, no different than prescription pills. I get my prescription from the doctrine that derives from the word. Consider Christ gives medicine and he came to heal also. Everything lines up. If you have black spaces, don't you have to have white spaces also? And would that be a reason why black men are a minority also? And is God's hand not diverse in which fear takes the form of knowledge, which generates supremacies and boundaries? War over resources, a knives out situation with spies, John Wick, every man for himself comprised under a mass of civil situations but beneath that mask of the flesh a wilderness and its thought according to its laws we just want to look the part when it comes to doing right we don't give a fuck about doing it Think about it. So if there's black spaces, we need white spaces also. There's two answers for people and why they're minorities. Considering individuals with certain type of knowledges and their fear, you see, I don't have to be racial at all, but I had to get us here for us to understand the differences between the archetypes of thought which divide society. In which, if his feet were burnt bras, then in the end, you won't have to go out into the sun to tan because we will all be as Christ. And the serpent of Moses' staff, which devoured two serpents from Egypt. The waters can come together, and you could be baptized that way, but I'd rather we walk together. The scripture tells us to love our enemies. The difference between knowledge is that knowledge casts shadows. Wisdom does not, pertaining to a conscious, I mean, when you see things according to your mind, all sides are lit in comparison to when you see outside of your eyes and you see shadows. Meaning that's perception and perception has perspective, opinions also. These are reasons which divide and what nature divides the spirit unites which is why the fear of this knowledge knows that eventually according if things continue to God's word that you won't have to go to a tanning bed Do you think that these archetypes of thought would divide the earth? And if to cover one, would you not block them all from this tree? And if this kingdom is upside down, could you be any more blind? And tell me about the heights of your college degrees and your decorations as well in this upside down place. <laughs> How low can you go? Think about it. So, the spiritual man, when a man is in the spirit and he has a promise and it goes according to faith, you know what I'm saying? The spirit goes on to the other, okay? Um, that, in other words, Abraham 
and his wife was just represented in the pillar of thought in Solomon's book, which speaks of wisdom as a, as a bride. And wisdom is a good wife and brings health and is supportive, so on and so forth. And these are archetypes as in you may have experienced with your first love. And that's why after that first love, things become so tragic for individuals in their lives. That heartbreak brings turmoil. And then they have different knowledge and experience new things and have fears also. And they don't engage in things with the open heart as much. These are things that are such like erosions that are spiritual, that affect our ways in which we don't consider even though we do. That's the katoma, which means mental blindness. You see what I'm saying? So your perception is different from that moment forward. Therefore, you would be cursed by knowledge, not enlightened by it. And it will divide your conscience and be as a thorn because you're not unbiased. Unbiased is as the ways of God. Love is unbiased. If love is, there would be no place that one would want love not to be. The law is for individuals who do not follow the ways of Christ. For those who follow the ways of Christ, there is no law. That doesn't mean that the law is done away with for individuals who don't follow Christ, then they come under the law. You understand what I'm saying? This is important to know. So being in a certain, let's just say archetype of mind, going in the ways of Christ, following Christ, then you're in an Abrahamic type, type of state, state, state of mind. And what your ways are peace and your spiritual abundance and wealth that you have according to your mind, your spiritual blessings that manifest by things that you do in your life. Because you're on a different channel or a higher frequency, if you will, of having an inner ear or if your mind is as a radio, picking up good ideas or bad ideas, you're on a higher frequency. And this is according, okay, to the promise of Christ, according to Abraham. So that's going to be like, you know, that's going to be an attribute of your character as if you're Russian doll uh, uh, off the this, off this spiritual blessings of Abraham, not his physical actions. But those who think according to knowledge needs physical actions or representations to recognize things that are spiritual. And this is actually backwards. You see what I'm saying? So you can see how much knowledge can get flipped around depending on how it severs and gets seared with the, uh, seared with the conscious. So an individual in the Ab uh, Abrahamic, uh, excuse me, I don't know how to exactly say it, spirit, which is the Holy Spirit and what have you, he's gonna be in a certain archetype of thought and he's going to um, generally uh, connect or attract with certain individuals. You see what I'm saying? And this is where you get the law of attraction and you might meet an individual. Okay. And this individual that you meet, depending on if he's in, if he or she is in the um, earth, you know what I'm saying? In the earth archetype, meaning the King of Tyree archetype pertaining to uh, existentialism, pertaining to their mind, you're gonna have very different conversations with this individual, which are not going to be substantive. So an individual has to be evenly yoked. This is spiritual. This is already everything you do, a, your blood is a copying machine. So anything that you do is it's like it's going into the registry of your blood to be passed down. Okay, like an heirloom. My blood would be my heirloom. If I had children, I would pass down my genetics and my history, so on and so forth. 
down to my children. Children, the ultimate 23 and me uh, situation, living and walking. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, when if you're if you if you're in that Abrahamic type of state and you attract two different types of women, these women would indicate archetypes of types of thoughts or feelings that you have towards them. One can be more impulsive and enticed like a strike to the ankle pertaining to your lower senses and your intentions in which you choose her over the other based upon perception and um, so-called low-hanging fruit to address certain desires in which you're feeding a wolf that will affect the scales of judgment per your next choices. Considering how you change every 11 months and how you think. It is like your grade on how you will think 11 months later. Each choice you make. Or whether you stay in that Abrahamic state or, 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 you, or you maybe start drooping down into the King of Tyree dynamic. Making a soul tie. And so with that law, when two become one flesh in such interaction... There is a soul tie. And when that soul tie happens, it's like these individuals, whether you want to call them energies or realms, are coming together. And so new things are introduced and they have two different laws. And these laws contrast. They co contrast. They cause collisions. And therefore, individuals that don't think the same. You know what I'm saying? On, on the core basis of things pertaining to principles eventually grow apart because these are massive things that aren't addressed in the beginning because in the beginning, everything is lighthearted. You see, but you have two different types of spirits with two different types of, uh, of laws coming together. And when they make children, that creates the comprising of the better halves of both spirits that collide and that individual's scales and how that individual weighs in the mind, even though he is given a new slate when he is born. Eventually, if he goes out of the way of Christ, will lean towards the scales of his father's and his father's father's thoughts so how they thought pertaining to the low hanging fruit. The bad ones and they will care and they will carry their fears so on and so forth up to four generations and these become everlasting chains that are spiritual pertaining to the conscious that is passed down in the blood and let's say they're not delivered within those four generations then those chains get even stronger and continues down the line you see what I'm saying? But if someone in the uh, uh, Abrahamic state um, uh, finds, um, uh, uh, chooses, you know, the woman or the woman that has wise properties or properties according to wisdom will bring health to the life, uh, uh, to his life, you know, um, will be a, 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 a great partner, uh, would be probably have great you know, have great motherly attributes, so on and so forth. This same would be regarded as, as a woman, uh, uh, um, um, an individual that would complete another individual. All right. This would be this would be different. And this this individual or this young lady would be in the attribute of of of, of Sarah. All right. Which is the, the, which Isaac was the offspring according to faith. Okay, according to faith. Now, Ishmael was created out of knowledge because the brightness of Ab Abraham and Sarah's reason was that since Sarah could not have children, that uh, Abraham should link up with Hagar instead of waiting on God, who said that he was going to promise them with seed, which he did later in their life. You know, Abraham was older in age by the time he had a child. You see what I'm saying? So 
this would be the difference between the ways or the spirit also that is passed down to their children and Isaac and which would lead to Christianity and Ishmael, which would lead to uh, Muslim tr traditions, which is reflective of the sun, which they use or, or not the sun, but the moon. They use the moon as a um, as a symbol or icon. I don't mean any disrespect. I'm not sure, you know, but uses the moon, you know, as Christians, we use uh, uh, we use the cross. OK, so <clears throat> these would be different schools of thought. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, Ishmael go, goes on the side of the matriarchy, which they trace their lineage back through the matriarchy. And, you know, spiritually, um, Hebrews, we trace our, our lineage through our patriarchy, through our fathers. Okay? Um, so, <clears throat> this is the thing. When you keep coming across these archetypes, these individuals represented in scripture are as archetypes of whether you're coming across uh, um, Sarah or another woman. And this is not compar uh, 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 comparable of any type of comparison between uh, Sarah and Hagar. This is comparable between faith and reason because we fall by the way of our reason and the, and the Bible says, uh, lean not to our own understanding. All right. So <clears throat> the thing is, is, um, you know, the seed of Abraham carries the ties, uh, the soul ties of, of, of Abraham. If you're in that archetype. All right. Meaning the godly attributes, uh, uh, um, the godly attributes of character. All right. Which is spiritual. All right. And Sarah is as a uh, spiritual pro property in which a promise echoes through spiritual fruit from spiritual providence, meaning the word of God. God said he gave Abraham a promise and, you know, it's like him receiving a blessing. So when you make the right choice or the right decision pertaining to who you want to be with, if you choose over your impulses and desires and, and, and not give into your leanings to have an actual um, real connection with the individual outside of your bias and so on and so forth, right? Then your opportunities in life start to open up. You know, you start to open up to people. I think we've become so closed off according to our knowledges, our, our knowledge, our clicks, so on and so forth. And in order to get out there, individuals have to communicate and be more open. And we find that this thing oddly is more scary than it should be. We have changed a lot since COVID especially. People are more separated, so on and so forth. And these provide greater separations pertaining to knowledge over time. And now we only deal with technology and pretty soon if we deal with technology too much, we'll forget how to talk to people. And we would call this adaptation or some individuals would call it evolution. How can we not be obsessed with the idea to merge with the machine altogether? to merge with our knowledge that we carry in a physical property devoid of the spirit. And these are our endeavors in which we know things that we shouldn't. And it's too subtle to be described. So when you make these decisions or choices between archetypes of characters that you see, whether it's David's wife or Bathsheba, the difference between the laws, the fruit that it brought, the archetype of Absalom that got raptured by his hair in a tree. That means he was caught up in his thoughts. He went crazy. That's what it means. Absalom, Absalom sought to kill his own father, David. And the spiritual fruit that was planted out of David's decision in a moment of weakness of his own flesh is as the times that we eat at the tree. And the fruit looks good to eat. But when you finish eating, it brings forth shame. And this shame brings forth death and this guilty conscience, so on and so forth. So make sure as you forgive others, you have to forgive yourself as well. 
How can you move forward? And these little choices we make are like little ripples in the water that ripple out. And the fluidity of reality in which we exist inside of, inside of our mind, pretending it's all existential. So these choices or these fruits are real things. You work a job, it manifests into things oftentimes that's tangible. There are steps in between, of course, I guess. But I'm just showing you how is things start, how the spiritual seed is important. And that connects to your intentions. And your intentions within inside of your choices that you pick the fruit from wisdom. Let wisdom be your bride, according to the words of the Bible. That you are given into you 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 will be given to a promise. Able to overcome your obstacles. You understand? Because these things come out of the providence of faith. And this is spiritual providence. No different than the black man being 13%. Look, Ma, we made it. Despite being in a 400 year deficit. Despite all the bullshit we had to go through. We had to go through. But somehow we've aged like wine, I think it's made us better in many cases. Depending on which fruit we choose. And this is the testimony of Christ to all. That if these individuals can survive such things, individuals can do incredible things. In which there would be, there would be no need for fear of any type of diversity. And it seems like I speak these things like Xavier from X-Men, speaking for my people to the subconscious of individuals that dare not speak it. In a country where we know the truth and it's a secret, I'm just speaking out. Naked as fuck. You understand? The promise comes from spiritual providence, according to a man's faith. All right? That each man is both Abraham and Isaac in Christ. Both individuals was delivered a promise. All right. And, you know, according to the promise and, 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 and the relationship between the promise and faith, there is no difference between these good principles and the things that they integrate into a character. And these are meta things, these principles. And the thoughts that they manifest are good things, which come from good principles, which are like the wheat inside of your mind. And the wheat are used to feed many that are around you, meaning the heavenly manna, your words, the things that you say. But the nature of natural knowledge, okay? The nature of natural knowledge is brutal. Knowledge that is sensual and lowly according to man. This individual from a former kingdom was motivated out of fear, not love. The creatures there were different also, and they had cheek teeth like knives. And it was like a wilderness and it was kill or be killed. And now we live in a city. And it's still the same. And that's the fall of man because we're supposed to be out of the providence of love. But we have knowledge different than God's spirit. So I ask this. If you have white spaces, don't you need black spaces also for white spaces? to feel great about being white. Wouldn't that be a thing? Unless we fear diversity. 
But if we fear in so much that all there needs to be is one color. Because it definitely would go to that way. And that everything has to be all white. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Then wouldn't this be narcissistic and selfish? And wouldn't this be like an archon, an angel that hangs over a certain people that reaps at their every mistake and feeds their desires also consider their blindness and their ways and their supremacy and how it links to their identity and you see the structures of the matrix and agent smith in which it's a canaanite name matrix was dead on double entendre if you have white spaces don't you need black spaces in order for white people to have their supremacy also and their morning coffee and their biscotti and those nice shoes and nice clothes and fast cars for me to be a byword that's in the bible that I would be called by it. Taken from Egypt to Egypt on back of a dollar. I can't get any opportunities to work a job here. I don't see how it could be any other way. And if God is about the blessings of life, then that would mean that there are secret desires amongst other so-called races and these things will have to be secrets also and i'm just waiting like there should be a line outside my door and they would say that he seems so damn cocky but well, why would it seem that way peace and blessings to you all i'm out